right. Thank you very much, uh, Kira. And thanks, uh, Linda, and the organizers of the conference, and all the people who came before us to present. It's been a great, uh, been a great conference so far, and I'm glad there are still people here. Uh, 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 not including Hannah Rosen, which is fine. Um, <coughs> she, she's, she had enough, I, and uh, she'd, um, she'll, uh, she'll have to catch it all later online. Um, uh, I, I'm uh, uh, going to talk about uh, the book in particular somewhat, and, but I also uh, am going to try to talk a little bit more about the claims, similar claims that sort of come from the, the general uh, 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 environment, not strictly, um, strictly from the book. Um, and I want to make two, oh sorry, I want to make two points, uh, two, two, two general points. One, um, uh, and I'm going to do a lot of data in this talk, um, one is uh, that women are not actually dominant. And this is pretty important because uh, um, uh, rather than just uh, run through a lot of specific details and errors and uh, uh, distortions in the book, which I could do, and which I have, there's a number on, of them on my blog if you want to go look. Um, I, I, I want to try to make the argument uh, that the story is fundamentally wrong, not just that there's a lot of uh, particular errors, right, um, uh, in, in the way that information is presented and interpreted. Uh, and, and one of the reasons that I, th I think it's important to establish that baseline, women are not actually dominant right now, and that's not surprising at this point in the conference, um, is that the, uh, the theory for how we have gotten to this place, which we aren't actually at, um, uh, is, is really very disempowering and disem sort of disembodying of, of how, of us as, as how these things actually happen. Uh, uh, it's not continuous and inevitable that women will rise. And in fact, um, the, the, uh, what I'll show in the second half is how, uh, uh, just how that's not happening. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, number one, and this has become, this has achieved almost meme-like status uh, out there, uh, young women earn more than young men, um, which is not true. Um, this is just earnings by age, and it's pretty close there in the upper 20s among full-time workers, comparing all full-time working men to all full-time working women. Um, the actual uh, data that this uh, comes from is really much more narrow than that. It is actually, when she says young men or young women, or when David Brooks, in quoting her, just says, young women earn more than young men these days. Um, they're, they're really referring to a study that was done that compared full-time, year-round working, never married, 22 to 30-year-old metro area workers with no children. Uh, and that is a, not a random a collection of variables to select on, actually. It's, it's really, if you really tried to find the group where you would expect to see the least labor market inequality, uh, that's where it would be, right? Young people never, without the young people in which the women in the people never had the burdens of marriage or children, uh, and they're working full time. But if you break those out by education, you quickly see that within each education level in that group, um, men are earning more. Uh, it turns out that that group has, is, is selected in odd ways. Um, there are a lot of Latino men in this category and a lot of white women. Um, it, it's, it, it doesn't make sense, and it's not true. OK. Um, uh, women are not taking over the middle class, number two. Um, we really like, in this day and age, 50%, people like to call 50% a tipping point, um, confusing a tipping point with a milestone, right? Uh, a milestone is just a neat number that you might like to focus on. A tipping point is, is a point at which whatever trend you're talking about accelerates and, and starts to take on speed. Anyway, so uh, if you massage the labor force data enough to you get to a fifth, over 50%, you get this category, managerial and professional jobs. And it is true that women are more than half of the workers in managerial and professional jobs. This is part of how Rosen sees them taking over the middle class. But this category, as you can see, includes the 89% of women who are nurses and the 78% of women who are elementary and middle school teachers, as well as the 12% of women who are uh, uh, engineers, or the 12% of engineers who are women, I should say. So a lot of segregation in this category. And without, if you didn't include all those professionals, if you just had the managers, you would see uh, it was a lot uh, more 
more mail than that, especially the top executives, which includes um, the people who run small uh, enterprises, by the way. That's why it's so high, 26% female. Okay. Uh, the other way that women are taking over the middle class is by uh, taking over education. We know they are receiving the majority of many kinds of degrees nowadays. Uh, we learn in engineering and science, women are beginning to crowd out men. When she says beginning to, what it means is it's not happening yet, what she's saying, but it's moving in that direction. Um, and again here, what's missing is the segregation angle. Uh, 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 the, if you look at the gender composition of, of people in their uh, 25 to 39 year old range, early career, or early to mid career people, I suppose, who have these degrees, this is all engineering and science. Uh, and, and you can see that it includes 75% female in psychology and, and all the way down to 20% female in engineering. Okay. Uh, within families, uh, somebody mentioned this picture yesterday, actually, from, this is from her New York Times Magazine excerpt. That's the woman standing next to the sad man who was sitting in the chair, I guess. Um, anyway, uh, uh, women earning more than their husbands has become more popular, but I would still classify it as kind of rare. Um, 28%. Now, this number can be massaged a lot also because if you include uh, just women who are working full time or just women who are employed, uh, you can get this number up around 40%. Um, but among all women, uh, all married couples, uh, uh, about a quarter or over a quarter, or as she would say, about 28%, nearly a third, um, are, are earning more than their husbands. It's a real example from the book. I'm not just picking on her. Okay, um, the other way to look at this is um, women earning more than their husbands. Uh, instead of just looking at that cutoff, that 50% cutoff, are they earning more or not, is to look at uh, the overall distribution. Here you can see the dark bars are 1970 all the way down to the light bars in 2010. This is the distribution of income within uh, married couples. And uh, you can see that back in the day in 1970, 46% of married couples, uh, the wife earned none of the income. And that's all the way down to 18.7%. So that's the dramatic rise of women's, uh, married women's labor force participation. Uh, on the other end, you can see the dramatic increase in families in which the wife earns all the money. It's quadrupled from 0.6% to 2.3%. Um, uh, and, and that whole curve has shifted off to the right somewhat. But we really don't want to get too carried away with this. OK. Uh, also in the category of earning more than their wives, uh, more than their husbands being kind of rare, is this idea that in marriage nowadays, marriage is totally changed by this dynamic. Because young women are more than young men, when they start their married life, they're starting off with more income than their husbands. Single childless women under 30 make more. This means that among the elites especially, there's a high chance that a woman is making more than the man when they first get married. Um, if you look at the people who just got married in the last 12 months, which the American Community Survey lets us do, uh, you can see that 36% uh, uh, of the college graduates ha have in uh, income greater than their husbands the year after they got married. You can see how much higher that is among African American women, but still, they're only 44%. Okay. Um, okay, then she shifts gears and she talks about the, uh, uh, the disappearance, the virtual disappearance of sexual assault as part of women's empowerment. Uh, partly because women are uh, so uh, economically independent that they're able to walk away from bad relationships. Uh, I hope that's true, um, but it is not, has not caused a disappearance of sexual assault. There has been a big decline in sexual assault, whether both uh, as reported to police or as reported on the National Crime Victimization Survey, which is, uh, captures unreported crimes. But she says that it has declined so much that the rates are so low in parts of the country, criminologists can't plot the numbers on a chart. Um, which is, I guess, a dig at criminologists' ability to plot small numbers on charts. But uh, anyway, um, I plotted these numbers on a chart. Um, uh, the interesting thing is, um, and there may be areas within these states that have very low rates. Um, the state with the lowest rate of a forcible rape per 100,000 from reported crimes is New Jersey at 11.2. That's more than twice the median uh, uh, rate of uh, forcible rape reported for uh, European countries. Okay. So we may be off the bottom of the chart uh, uh, for, in some, we're not. OK. I can't, I can't make a joke out of that. OK. Um, then she switches gears again and says, well, in fairness, this isn't such a great story. After all, we should realize that now that women are seizing power, we're going to have more crime, uh, uh, more female violence and female crime, because um, she's not an essentialist, and women actually are capable of being, uh, behaving badly like men. Um, the evidence for this is extremely weak. Um, there is one trend which is upward 
uh, which is the number of arrests of uh, female juveniles for violent crimes. Um, but all the measures of actual violence uh, show declines of female violence. Um, uh, so you can see female offenders per thousand women. This is from crime victimization surveys when they ask who, who victimized you. Uh, this has declined uh, by about half just in the last 12 years. A slight upward increase in the percentage of violent, violent uh, crime committed by women, uh, but not very much. Uh, and, and an extremely sharp drop in uh, uh, intimate partner homicide, uh, but a much sharper drop among male victims than among female victims uh, uh, in the last, uh, for this is 40 years. Okay. Uh, okay. This thing about Alabama being a place of female dominance, I have to just pause on. Um, uh, women do not dominate Alexander City and Auburn, Alabama, and I can say that never having been there. Um, and so, <laughs> Uh, the problem is, that if the facts don't support the generalization, then the anecdotes are, are not illustrations of a trend. They're just, um, they're just little stories. Um, she says, suddenly, it's who we are relying on the women. Uh, it's, it's, it's us who are relying on women that she's quoting this man who was laid off. Uh, suddenly, we got women in control, and she adds, this year, Alexander had its first female mayor. Um, well, actually, that female mayor Barbara Young was elected eight years earlier. She's a very traditional Southern Republican politician. She's the widow of a, of a state's attorney or a, a, some other politician. Uh, her children are politicians. Um, uh, uh, she's stepping down this year, and there are five men competing to replace her. Um, so there will not be a, a female mayor in Alexander City next year. Uh, the city council has one woman out of six. Um, the department heads of the city are uh, 14 out of 15. Uh, male, but more importantly, as far as the deadbeat men in her story, the young guy, you only know he's awake because the cigarette smoke starts coming out from under his door in the trailer park in the morning. Um, the truth is, men in their 20s in Alexander City, 77% of them are employed, more than the women, 53%. I'm not saying the men are better than the women, it's just a pretty normal pattern. Uh, employment rates are higher for men at all ages. The labor force is over 50% male. The high end of the earnings distribution is overwhelmingly male and men earn more on average. Down the road in Auburn, she says, it's one of the economic powerhouses. It's the region's economic powerhouse. It has turned itself into a town dominated by women. I have no idea how she can say this. Um, the city council and the mayor, the, uh, the department heads, the University of Auburn, OK, obviously, uh, as you would expect, about 85% female. But more importantly, look at, the, look at family income between husbands and wives. You can see 32% of the family uh, of married couples, uh, the wife earns no percent of the income or under 10 percent, and uh, about 2 percent does the wife earn over 20. So it's about the same as the rest of the country. Um, uh, uh, the workforce is majority male, women earn 70 percent of what men earn, men are 70 percent of the managers, et cetera. It's not happening. This is not true. Okay. <clears throat> okay, finally, um, and I'm going to run out of time before I do a lot of some of my trends, but I want to say this. She has this idea that the, the velocity of change is so great that it's unstoppable and women will crash through 50% of or equality and reach dominance just by sheer force of the rapidity of change. But the truth is uh, we're stalled and have been on, on many indicators for 10 to 20 years. So she says, and this is an important example, um, not just picking on her um, for, for being loose with the facts, women are now lead TV anchors, Ivy League presidents, bank presidents, corporate CEOs, movie directors, scatologically savvy comedians, presidential candidates, all unthinkable 20 years ago. Not only are those not unthinkable 20 years ago, those had all happened 20 years ago, okay? With the exception of Ivy League president, which was not until 1993, um, 19 years ago. So uh, Marlene Sanders and Jessica Savage were anchoring the news. Shirley Chisholm and Pat Schroeder had major pr presidential campaigns. Roseanne Barr was pretty scatological. Um, <laughs> Uh, Penny Marshall was already directing her fourth feature film for Hollywood by 1992. Uh, uh, Maggie Lena Walker founded a bank in 1902, et cetera. Okay. So, but the, the important point that what's lost here in this idea of this, uh, this unstoppable force is um, that, that it doesn't just happen. It's not just technology or economic change that moves us in the direction of gender equality, but there are other things that have to happen, things like politics and social movements and policy. Right? Um, so uh, I think technology has given women a boost. But you can see here women's labor force participation hasn't increased since the late 1990s. 
Uh, I'll skip that one. Uh, the gender gap in pay had a big run up in the 80s and early 90s and has trickled upwards since then, not very much. The gender gap by education shows that women with college degrees are doing worse compared to men with college degrees than they were 20 years ago. Uh, uh, segregation, the blue line is women without college degrees, no progress in 20 years. The green line is women with college degrees, some uh, desegregation in 20 years, not much. The 70s and 80s are when this change happened. Women entering management, big increase in the 70s and 80s, virtually nothing since then. Uh, uh, okay, time is up. So let me conclude <coughs> um, by saying um, we need to think more about why we're stalled than we do, uh, uh, than we need to think about um, uh, uh, how far we've come, I think, uh, to, put it, to put it bluntly. Uh, and, and the problem, what I find problematic about the book and the narrative is the idea that all we have to do is sit there and watch women uh, reap, uh, reap their gains. Um, these, are the, these are the mentions of feminism and the word feminist in the Google Books uh, uh, database, and you can see they both peaked in the 90s. Um, uh, it, I, we need to think about things like culture and politics and policy um, and not just um, watch uh, technology do its, do its magic.